Okay, next what we are going to do is work on the top end and we're going to install these studs. Um, this is just if you've taken them out, there's no real reason to take these off. Um, the only two important things, um, by the way, C50s, 50 cc's and 70 cc's are the same size and width, okay, same size width strength. So um, you don't have to worry about upgrading if you do a simple 72 cc, uh, 47 millimeter bore upgrade to a C50. Um, the only thing you do need to note is which ones, which ones you're going to drop and which ones you're going to hold in your hand. No, um, which ones are longer and which ones are shorter. You can see there are two longer ones. The long ones go in here, um, here and here, and the short ones go here and here. Um, the 90cc ones are longer because it has a longer stroke and um, 100cc ones are longer and fatter so um, just keep that in mind. Um, what I do like to do is take a cotton swab and um, clean out the holes if you do remove them. Clean off these threads and uh, then oil them up too. I've already done that for time's sake. Um, so just, and, and the only, the way that you put them in is literally, literally just start screwing them in like so. Um, the, the, oh yes, um, one more thing to note is that this bottom right stud, um, if you're looking at the engine, is um, exposed to the elements. It's literally outside of the engine, um, whereas these three are internal. So when you put the engine to get, um, so when you take it apart, you might see a little bit of corrosion or rust or whatever um, starting to take place on one of your studs. Um, if you take them out, um, I recommend putting, swapping this one to here if the corrosion is really bad and you don't want to buy a new stud. Um, when I say bad, I mean just a bit of surface corrosion. You know, this is nothing to worry about, so you can keep that down there. That's the only tip I really have um, regarding those studs because um, if they're exposed to the elements quite a bit, they will corrode and weaken, and you don't want that. So going to install these. Um, I've seen people, what they do is that they to install the studs um, to torque them down. Once you get to, once they are reasonably torqued down, is they'll take a knot and they will thread it on about like a, well okay, here, here's what you can do. Um, I've there's nothing wrong with doing this way, I'll have to be honest, but it's just that when I was doing it before, I burst one of the, th the threads off, and um, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, because I know that um, I was using it on a really old bike, really cheap, uh, with, oh, it was a Chinese bike too. So what you do is uh, you, you put a knot on here to begin with, and then you um, I'll move this here, and then you you jam up Okay, you have to, to, to make sure that this... Okay, you jam the two knots together. So take a, your 10 millimeter spanner and your... Okay, your 10 millimeter spanner and your, your 10 millimeter socket. And you jam them up against each other like this. Just not, not too hard. That way when you torque it down, you start torquing the nut, you actually torque the stud down. Oh, please, come on, focus on the thing right in front of you. Go. And so you see how it's turning the stud. And um, this is how you can turn the stud into the block, and it works fine. I have said I burst the thread off the bottom one before, but that was a really old bike, and it was a, it was a Chinese bike too. So, um, but I've everybody I've talked to actually seems to say this this way works just fine in in talking down the stud. Now that you see that the nut is starting to slip, so um, you you will want to lock it kind of in place and then give it some more torquing down. You don't need a lot of torque on these studs at all. Just be careful. You do need to jam it on the nut though because if you try and just use this and then walk it all the way down and then tighten it, you're going to burst the cap off of that knot and you don't want to do that. Um, that is, oh, and, and see what you want to do is unjam the knot. Okay, let's tighten the stud back down. And then you want to unjam the nut. That was something that was my bad. There you go. And so unjam these, that's how you torque these down. So um, just that's all you're going to do. Okay, these studs are torqued down, all four of them. Um, now, 
you're going to put in next these locating dowels okay and uh, they go in here and here all you have to do is slide them over the end here you go slide them over the end down like this and feed them into the holes so um, they might take a little bit of um, encouragement that you um, or, yeah, you need to encourage them in there um, by tapping Okay, moving onwards to the piston. Now I'm not going to get, I'm assuming you're an experienced builder here. So um, if you don't know, however, what ring end gap is, that's the gap here. If you don't know what that is, and if you don't know how to set it properly, uh, stop and double check or learn what it is and learn why it is important, um, you know, how to properly set it and all of that. Um, however, if you are a novice builder, but you can follow along with basic instructions, um, you can you you can have a machinist do it. Um, any machinist will know what we're talking about. Um, the end gap for this, I'll just give you the specs. The end gap for a 50, you can see this is a 50 piston, um, is 0 0.065 about. 0 0.065 millimeters and for a 70 or a 90 it's about 0 0.8 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.08 to 0 0.085 so um, that that's about what the proper end gap is so um, I'm, but I'm just going to go um, on with the the order of installation um, for the rings I'm assuming they are already gapped so here is your piston um, first what I like to do is install the oil scraper ring and I set the gap um, I, I set the gap of the oil scraper ring on top just like that okay so at the 12 o'clock position if you're looking at an analog clock um, if you're not if you're looking at a digital watch um, which is still I think really really cool um, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about so um, but uh, then I like to put the oh I like um, then I set this ring here. By the way, these are bi-directional. This is the oil scraper ring. It's very thin. I set this gap over this side of the piston pin. Again, if you don't know how to set piston rings, um, be um, look at familiarize yourself because I'm going to. I'm just showing you the order that these go on and where the gaps are. Assuming that you are an experienced builder and that you, you already have an idea what those terms are. And then I set this gap on the other side, okay? So I have one gap, one gap over one side of the piston pin ball and one gap over the other one. And so they are set exactly 180 degrees apart. And next is going to be your um, second piston ring. This ring, um, these rings are directional, so you have to make sure that you have, I'm just gonna try and show you the T, no? I'm not going to want to focus in on it. Try and bring my glove. I'm going to drop it on the floor. You see the T? It's a little bit hard to see. And then there's a number right here that says 0.25. Um, that is. That side means top. Okay. And um, I set the. So if this is the intake side, I set the second ring to be in the six o'clock position or that that gap on the opposite side of the intake like so and um, this ring is obviously directional as well there you can see the T and the 25 the 0.25 and I set this gap 180 degrees apart I've had really good luck with this, um, or a really good experience with this setup, and so, um, and I've run, I've rebuilt about 70 engines, I've not had a problem with setting the gaps 120 degrees apart, 2 I do it 180, um, works great for me. And lastly, um, some uh, I recommend putting in a piston, uh, one of your piston pin retaining clips. Now some people will say that these fail on you. Um, I have, as I've said, I've done many engines. I've never had design, one of these designs fail. Um, so I couldn't tell you 
why um, I can't recommend against them because like I said I've never had a failure before with these so um, that's just my little experience um, but um, either way you're going to put one of the clips in like so yeah, putting this um, piston in is just like any other um, you're going to line it with the top of the con rod and you're going to slide the pin in just like so so that um, and of course it's going to be a little um, well, it's going to be a tight fit and um, then you're going to that's it that's literally it <laughs> sorry I was trying to build that up to make it sound exciting but it's nothing nothing really earth-shattering about it and then the last thing you're going to do is install do not forget this circle clip I'll do it all the time um, I always catch myself in the double check but I, I end up finding myself going okay um, I you'd think I would remember to get this clip oh my pliers broke look at that <laughs> okay okay so the next step is to buy some new pliers after yours are broken and make sure that you install the make sure you install this clip um, um, my weakness I always seem to forget that one and then I double check myself and then I find I've forgotten it um, and then you can let this hang down if you ever see 70 or 90 there um, and you're not very careful this um, the, the piston actually rests on the studs and so I like to put a little paper towel underneath it. This is a 50 though, it just it dangles down so you'll be okay. Um, that's just one of those, if you happen to be really rough, um, you could scratch the piston while you have a, if you, you know, because it's metal on metal contact. But if you're relatively careful, you don't need to worry about that. Next step is to, um, in, we're going to install the cylinder base gasket. Some of them have a little, they're, they're complete, I guess, I, that's the term it doesn't really matter um, again I'm going to just keep repeating this I like to use um, the double-sided gaskets because they separate much more cleanly um, that's the OEM style so if you get OEM it will go um, it will come out very cleanly um, well at least better than if it's just a paper gasket so align it like so very very simple okay next part is this o-ring but um it's very very easy to knock off the o-ring um, and it goes in right here like this but it's like I said it's very easy to knock it out if you um, and when you're not paying attention that can happen so I highly recommend um, I'll, I'm gonna show you what to do just make sure you have your o-ring ready on demand watch it roll away like that Okay, next, what we are going to do is install the cylinder. Should go without saying that you really, really want to have this clean, the surface clean, um, you know, clean off with solvents and all of that good stuff. And um, what I do is, if you can see inside, I, I lubricate it with some motor oil. Um, you want to do that um, just obviously when you're installing it, you know, any piston, uh, you don't want it to be dry rubbing so much. That you do want to have oil on. Um, so keep note of that there's nothing special about installing this it's just fitting it over the studs and then walking it on it's all you have to do for that okay get ready to install your piston um, I'm going to assume as I've said you're an experienced builder and you know how to do some top ends if you don't please reference my top end video um, and it will it will walk you through um, but so um, now I'm just going to work the rings in, um, just getting my way around it, you know, feeling them in. And there we go. Okay, at this point, you don't, um, remember I said, get your O-ring ready. Um, slide the O-ring in. I like to do it right here because that way you have such you have no chance or a much less chance of knocking it out so uh, slide the o-ring in there and then go the rest of the way with the barrel like so and once that sits over it the o-ring obviously can't fall out and I know what my neighbors doing so I'll just ignore the tapping um, so anyway um, next is install this crosshead um, bolt here um, don't torque this all the way down though 
and just get it started and um, no need to cinch it at all just no no heavy torque whatsoever but um make sure that it sort of the the barrel is you know kind of you know buttoned up against the uh, the cases um, but no torque whatsoever no massive torque at all okay and that is the cylinder the way that it um, should sit just like so um, what I do now actually is I like to bring up the engine to top dead center um, just you know getting the ballpark get close there you go there's our nice beautiful new piston okay regarding head gaskets there are many different types of head gaskets so I'm just going to outline the differences between them so that you know the appropriate hardware that you need to install and um, while you're putting in your head gasket this applies to any 50 70 or 90 okay so the first day is is you have to look at the size of this hole over here and so look at the gasket here and look at the size of the hole if it's bigger than the rest then that means you have the umbrella seal and o-ring style um, seal um, the the style of a uh, oil seal so the umbrella seal looks like this or rather the collet which is going to be the anti-crush you know there's nothing else in front of you can't you focus on that there you go and um, and you're going to have an o-ring over this you see the collar acts as an anti-collapse system it slides over the dowel not that one it slides over this dowel and then the gasket goes over that and so that is how you're going to have that but um, if you have a 50, excuse me, 50, if you have a, the holes are all the same size as this gasket is, then there's just no O-ring period. Uh, there is no seal, nothing. You just put the gasket on as is. Secondly, if you have, um, you look at this size of the hole, and you can see that the graphite gasket's quite a bit smaller. That means that if you have a small one, all that you need is this small fat o-ring that goes in just like this but if you have the larger one this one has the anti-crush washer the anti-collapse washer so it's a larger o-ring but what you do is um, you have this little metal insert that goes in between the o-ring this prevents it from collapsing on you for um, for any reason but you have to remember you can't just upgrade the barrel or you can't upgrade the the gasket excuse me um, you actually have to have a barrel that has a wide enough hole to use that so um, you can see that this one um, it, it it fits oops um, th this style fits but um, if you were to just have uh, some barrels this ring will not physically fit in there and it's just useless to even try so um, that's just one of those uh, things you have to be aware of so you can't just upgrade the gasket if you wanted better sealing for whatever reason and then uh, the the last thing is um, when when choosing a head gasket I personally like uh, metal gaskets because they transfers heat away from the head better totally up to you um, that's your option but the only two differences are going to be the o-ring here some of them have a little bead of sealant around here there's so many aftermarket parts I'm not going to go into that I'm just going to continue on um, installing the the head so uh, with that let's continue on um, by the way I'm going to um, use this graphite if I said I was going to use the uh, the metal gasket I'm not I'm, I'm going to be using the one that has the umbrella seal with this um, so uh, anyway um, what we do two dowels you see one goes here bottom right corner and uh, but one goes to the top left it's not not the not here now it is the top left so slide you in there slide you in there if you can sometimes they are a bit grumpy and they don't want to go actually wait this one is a bit corroded I remember this now um, it's not gonna go in on the bottom right you don't need two you can actually get away with one and I've done it many many times and um, so uh, and I mean many times and it doesn't matter so uh, you only need one so I'm going to use that locator over here if you're installing um, the not if you're installing so um, now slide your head gasket on there you go by the way the gaf graphite gaskets are not reusable your umbrella seal 
goes down like the, the umbrella seal, your umbrella washer thingy um, assembly goes like this. The umbrella part, the, the little flat edge part is going to be on top and the washer, uh, the, the o-ring is going to sit like this. So slide that down bottom left, okay. It's only one hole it can go into. You see how that, um, oops. I'll take the cover off of the, so you see how that um, fits nicely in there and that it is being um, held into place. And then uh, lastly, this one has the small hole, so it's going to have just one o-ring. And it fits just like that, um, very simply. Now I'm going to go back. But again, remember, if there's a lot of uh, wiggling around, um, uh, it, you can possibly knock the o-ring, um, this o-ring out. So uh, pay attention to that. But you might be thinking, all right, let's put the head on. Uh, no, not just yet. I'm going to show you why. Um, because what we're going to do is go to the timing chain side. The reason we're doing that is because if we don't feed the timing chain all the way through um, and, and get the tensioner in, it gets to be a royal pain to try and do it afterwards, so you're going to do it now. And for the 50 and the 70 cc, it's 82 links. Okay, uh, you you can't really tell um, just from looking at this, but this 82 links. If you have a C90, which has a longer barrel, it's going to be 84 links. Okay, so you have to loop it through the crankshaft first. So what I do is I I tend to, or what I like to do is I put a little loop over the timing gear like so, so that the chain kind of grabs on. And then I bunch it up, and uh, I start. I essentially just try and feed it through the barrel with one finger like so so I can get um, some slack to grab and then I pull it through just like this then you drape it over the gear and you make sure you drape over the other gear and then you can let it fall just like that so the chain is going to look like this you can see that it is over the gear your oil pump drive gear and it is over the gear, uh, the timing gear on the crankshaft. All right, now with that in, um, I've uh, pulled the head gasket off, and so I'm just going to slide that back on. Of course, loop the gasket or the the chain through the gasket. Center up the gasket like such. Um, you can put the o-ring on if you would like, um, but just make sure it doesn't fall off later on. Um, that is obviously a possibility because it's not secured down by anything. You can glue it if you want. Oh, by the way, that sealant I was talking about, 3 bond 1104. Um, I don't know if that's Yama bond. Yama bond meaning a Yamaha. Um, they do a, a sort of OEM sealant and it's 11 or it, their compound they call number 3 or 4. Well, I don't know how it corresponds to this, so miscellaneous info there. There's one more thing, and it is the timing chain tensioner and its bolt. So pick that up. You can see it right here. This is a brand new one. Um, sometimes they have really cheap versions that they put in this. Uh, the center is all rubber. Uh, this one is actually composite, so um, it's, uh, it is not just rubber, but sometimes the really cheap ones are rubber. Um, I like to get the ones with the metal insert, just a quick note on that. Um, so inside here is going to be metal, um, just, but uh, at minimum make sure it's not all rubber. Um, like I said, this one's composite, so it's okay. Um, it will do for, um, for our intents and purposes. Um, I stabilize it by putting in my finger on the other side. And I line it up holding it kind of like in a scissor fashion. Then I stick the bolt in like this. Um, oh yes, here's your bolt. And has an aluminium washer or a copper washer, I've seen both. Um, just make sure that it has a washer. Otherwise, um, if you're in a pinch, you can put sealant over the, the barrel and uh, bolt it down over the sealant. That does work, I've done that before in a pinch. I live in the countryside. Uh, you don't have to tighten this all the way down. Um, in fact, I like tightening everything down at the end, just so I know it's all been done at once. My personal opinion on that one. Okay, going to the cylinder head. Um, 
I'm, again, for time's sake, I'm not going to talk about lapping the valves or anything because it's pretty much the same for any motorcycle head. There's no special instructions for a Honda Super Cub head. If you pull the, um, if you take out the valves, um, it's the it's the exact same process as lapping them. Um, if you need to do oversized valves, the same process for reaming them, all of that. Um, if you're cutting new valve seats, again, same thing. So there's nothing really specific about that. So for time's sake, I'm going to skip that. Um, also, it's um, they require some special tools, and I think people on YouTube and uh, or anywhere can explain it better than I do. Um, my opinion on that. So I'm going to move straight on to just assembling the cylinder head. This is the head that has the valves already in it. Um, you can see that they're there, but I don't have. There's no cam. There's no rockers, shafts, or, or any of the anything on there. It's just. The valves um, have already been installed with new seals. If you want new seals, I don't see why you wouldn't do that. Um, so, actually, sorry, the first thing we're going to do is install the camshaft. Assuming that uh, you've done everything you want to it. Um, and it slides right in, just like so. <coughs> Knees. So. Camshaft goes in, this is the 50, so it's very, very tiny, um, very, very tiny lobes. Um, and um, yeah, that's just the way that it goes in. Um, these bearings, you can press them on or, or press them off um, either way. And that's all you need to do for the camshaft. Um, next side, we're going to install the rocker shafts. Um, they, these are directional, by the way. Um, they, well, they they can have a specific direction. I don't think it affects the way that the bike runs, but there is a direction. There is a smooth side in here. See? No, can't see. Okay, there is a smooth ball side inside, and then there is a threaded side. The threaded side is going to be towards you, so the threaded side is going to be outwards as we put it in. So take your rocker, um, make sure it's on the correct side, so whether it be the intake or the exhaust rocker, although if they are brand new and your camshaft is brand new and the valves are brand new, uh, they either one fits either side. So slide the rocker in between this gap, take your rocker shaft, slide it in, um, and slide it through. Just like so. But that's not enough to put it in here. You actually have to push it in all the way so I take a, a bolt, kind of push down on the threads, and then I push it in the rest of the way so that it clears the hole. So you need to see all the way through this hole. If you can see all the way through the hole, then that is um, far enough in. Um, that because the cylinder stud needs to go straight through there. And uh, then do the exact same thing for the exhaust side. Okay, smooth bore, so there's a threaded side. Slide the rocker shaft in, oh, the rocker shaft, the rocker arm in. Slide the shaft, starting to go in. Put your, your bolt in there and push all the way. And look to see that we have pushed all the way in and you can see all the way through um, without the shaft being in the way. That is appropriate, that is good. Now, um, what I do, if these are loose, which they should be, um, I'll take, I, I start tightening the square side down, so I back the nut off, and then I tighten the square side down. I'm not going to adjust the valves uh, or this way, I, I, I like to adjust it, Oop, the camshaft fell out, that happens, so put the camshaft in. Slide it back in, there you go. Top, tilt the engine this way. So um, take the adjuster all the way down and so that all the slack is out. Um, also, make sure the camshaft can freely rotate that the lobes are pointing down. That is uh, top dead center position, of course. So um, tighten the adjuster all the way down and so that all the slack is taken out. And uh, then I'll just back it off you know, about that much, you know, quarter turn. And then I, I don't tighten the nut down, I just back it off and then cinch the nut so that um, it will stay there for now and do the same for this side this will take off th this will get you in the ballpark for when you want to adjust your valves uh, after the the head is on the engine 
I just like to do this because it also keeps the cam from running away like just happened. So there we go. And uh, that, that is that. No need to put on the valve covers yet um, because uh, obviously we still haven't uh, adjusted our valves. So let's bring the engine back. Um, there's nothing too difficult about installing the head. Um, just here's my way I'd like to do it. Align two of the dowels so that they, um, they rest in the hole and then I pivot it over and that way they will line up with the top studs. That way you minimize the risk of uh, scratching the head with these studs. Oops, the engine wants to rock. And uh, when the head's about here, if by the way, if it thunks, if it gets stuck here, check to see if the rocker shafts have not backed out. That does happen quite often. So um, that's just a note on that. Um, but if it, if it can slide all the way like this, then no worry, you are good. Take your timing chain, feed it through here. I, to, I like to grab it. I pull it this way with one hand to maintain tension. And then I slowly lower the head onto the barrel. Okay, um, sorry. Let me bring the camera up a little bit. There you go, and I slowly lower the head on top. Check underneath the engine to make sure that the O-rings have not fallen off, and they haven't, so that is good. Um, once you get to here, um, with this type of engine, you can actually put the timing chain over the, uh, you can put it over the housing and it will stay there. So that's just an easy way to do that. Um, get your next bolt, the, um, where'd it go? There you are. Install this bolt, but don't tighten it, okay? Just put it in to keep bring it down so there's no more, uh, more clearance or anything um, but then don't uh, tighten it because that will pull the head over to one side before you tighten down the head studs and that can potentially cause the head gasket to blow and uh, that is what we call a bad thing so you want to um, not do that so of course um, so tighten the bolt down okay so um, that is good enough now, um, what we are going to do, um, make sure that the head is at top dead center, um, the, the camshaft is where the top dead center position will be. We already know that the piston is at top dead center, we've already um, felt that. Um, you can check manually you want through the spark plug hole, um, but uh, we already we know we're at top dead center. The head, um, to, it's going to, you see it goes how the cam wheel, um, how this is parallel to the ground. If we go here, this is as far as this side goes, and then we push down, that's as far as this side goes. So right in between there, right exactly parallel with the ground is top dead center for here. Um, if it's the other way, meaning that uh, if you can't move the camshaft um, at all, then you want to flip it, um, so turn it 180 degrees to where it has some um, play like this. Um, it's not all the same for all the shafts, or the cam shafts, but this is the typical 12 volt one with the dual, the dual roller ball bearings. And so, um, but as I said, if you're not clear on that, you can check with my other videos. I explained the three bolt cams in there too. Okay. And with that, okay. Next, what we're going to do is put on the camshaft sprocket, um, making sure that it is at top dead center. So grab your cam sprocket. And how you're going to align this, let me move the engine over. How you're going to align this is with, there is a timing mark on the head, right in there, you can see it right here. And you want to align the sprocket so that this circle of the sprocket aligns with that side so it's going to look like this so you see the circle is going to line up with that little groove right here um, let me try and show you that you can see the groove inside there okay so you're going to align that that is how the sprocket is going to align so a simple way to do this I just stick the sprocket in grab it um, through the Get the top chain part of the chain to grab and then you you see how easy that is to do 
top part of the chain to get in here. But you notice it's not aligning up. It's too tall. So then I back the chain off. Um, I, I back the chain off um, one or two teeth like this. Walk it around. Walk it around. Now the sprocket is, I went too far. So I'm going to show you to do it the other way. Now I'm going to back off the chain, turn the sprocket one tooth over, and that should put me right in line with the um, the head. And you can see it does. Sorry, it's um, it might look slightly off because of the camera angle. I'm trying to hold, literally I'm holding a tripod because my camera is bolted to it. And so, but I, I promise you from my eye, it is dead on, it is straight on, and you can see what we're aiming for. That's the most important thing, and that's where you want it to sit. Now, of course, you can see, well, it doesn't align with the bolt holes, but the easy way to deal with that, hold this with your thumb, and start turning either the flywheel or the crankshaft, and it will rotate the cam to a certain point, and the cam, the load bumps up against the rocker arm, and you can, um, and so it will stay stationary while you line up the cam with the uh, um, with the bolt holes. So you saw how that worked. Um, sorry, that wasn't super clear, but um, I think you understand the idea. So the cam will be stuck like that, and what you do is you rotate until it bumps up on either side against the uh, um, uh, it bumps up one of the lobes bumps up against one of the rockers, and then you can bolt, um, put in the two bolts and tighten them down and then you shall be good, you should be good for that. I'm not going to torque them down here because I want to rotate the engine to check everything to make sure we have, we're good for clearance. So with this, what I'm going to do now um, well, I'm, I'm not going to do it uh, yet, um, but um, you can, because I'm going to bolt the head down next. So I'm going to bring this to top dead center. I'm going to bolt the head down. So what you're going to need is the valve cover and the valve cover gasket. Valve cover gasket is not um, uh, whatever direction, um, omnidirectional is that the term? Um, it is actually, it only goes on one way. So uh, I'll show you really quickly. This is the appropriate way. You can see there's a little bit of um, place, a uh, little bit of the metal sticking out. But if you put it on upside down, and like so, if you put it on upside down, it's going to look a bit funny. And you can see how much gasket is actually sticking up over the engine. So you can see how it doesn't um, it doesn't fit nearly as cleanly, and you can see the gasket is quite a bit off center like this. So you want it to be um, just make note that there is one correct direction to put this on. You can also put it on backwards too. So that's why I wanted to uh, demonstrate. So. This is the correct way to where all of all sides are um, aligned up. But if I put it on backwards, it doesn't actually like to go on either. So that's just um, a bit. That's a, a important part too. You actually see, I'm actually having trouble putting it on, and you can see it doesn't really line up. With the left side either too well you see how much space we have here um, sorry for taking a bit of time to explain that but that is important i believe there is only one way for this gasket to go on even though it looks like it can go on anyway so test fit it you see how easy that goes on and um, you don't have much um, of gasket uh, or the gasket evenly covers all sides uh, next the valve cover they look like this. Some of them have different patterns on it. The main thing is is that uh, um, you you know um, you, well. The main thing is is that you have this part. Obviously, I'm sorry about that. I'm getting a bit uh, loopy. I'm a bit hungry. When you're putting this on, the arrow goes down. 
obviously you can't put it on the wrong way, so the arrow goes down, okay? Um, which, it seems counterintuitive because you see that the lettering is actually this way, and you'd think maybe the arrow goes up, but it's actually the other way. The arrow goes down. And there's an arrow on the outside too, in case you're wondering. So slide it on. And uh, when we are belting this down, make note uh, there is one copper washer. Let me go, let me, let me actually shoot this straight on. This is where your copper washer goes because that is where your oil feed is. And then the rest are steel washers, or I don't know if they're steel, but they're silver colored. So um, put your copper washer wherever it is in this somewhere. There you is. Okay, put your copper washer on that side and um, the silver washers go on the other side, uh, on the other sides, uh, flat side down of the washers. And when it comes to the nut orientation, you want to put the three capped nuts here, here and here, but the bottom right is going to be an open nut. Um, you can put a capped nut if you don't have the open nut for whatever reason. Um, I've done that just to be stupid um, because I wanted to disobey the Honda manual and uh, the manufacturers. Um, I forgot the important step of dropping it on the floor. It's necessary. So drop it on the floor, pick it up, and then put it on. There you go. See, it's much better the second time. I hope you understand sarcasm. Okay. Okay, um, now we're going to torque down these nuts. Here is your torque spec. And um, we're going to do it in a cross pattern. One, two, three, four. I don't know if it matters where you start. I've never had trouble um, where I've started. So I usually start on the open nut. But what I like to do is I give it just a little bit of tightening down. You see that the nuts I can't, I can just do a little bit by my fingers. But then I don't do the full torque. I just give it a little bit of torque with my fingers. See, I'm, I'm only using my fingers for this. And the reason, the reason I'm doing that is because, well, the way I was trained as a mechanic, um, when you're bolting down the head bolts of a car engine, sorry, kick the tripod, when you, you're bolting down the head bolts of a car engine or head studs, you only do a third of the torque the first time, and then you do a third of the torque, um, another third, a second time, and then you do the final torque the third time. So um, I don't think it really matters on C90 engines, you could probably just do full torque each time. But um, I do it this way because um, that's just the way I was taught as a car mechanic. So you don't warp the head. But so you see the head here is so narrow that I don't think it actually matters. So I'm going to torque it down to the appropriate spec. I'm doing this obviously by hand. Um, the, the precision tools where I live are so not precision to where it's almost better to do it by hand rather than to trust the gauge of your tools. Um, and um, so that's just one of those things. I've done many of these, so I'm, I'm used to uh, talking these down, and uh, so I'm, I'm not afraid of over-talking it. So you see how I, um, I did that. And check the torque again afterwards, just to, to be sure that you've done it um, correctly. And there you go. And now you can torque down these two bolts on the side. And you can go for that one too while you're at it. So we're going to do that. As I've said, the reason you don't want to torque these down first is because you don't want to um, uh, pull the, the cylinder off center um, before the head studs are torqued down. So, uh, so we torque you down and then get the, the cylinder thing too. Now don't overdo these because you can actually flatten the washer. So, and there you go. Okay, um, before you seal up this side, um, if you're wondering why the background is different, I'm shooting this at a different time. I forgot to include this in the previous video. So, what you want to do before you close up the, um, this with the, cam, with the cam sprocket cover, is you want to rotate your engine two times, at least two times. I actually do it for all six, um, because I'm just that way, I'm kind of picky. I like to um, 
you know, definitely ensure that things are done correctly, um, you want to rotate the crankshaft at least twice. Um, and the reason being is because two revolutions of the crankshaft, you can see this gear is roughly half the size of the sprocket. In fact, it is exactly half of the size um, in terms of uh, diameter, so half the diameter of the sprocket. So that means two revolutions is going to equal one over here. Um, you're going to rotate the crankshaft two times so that you ensure that there's no uh, clearance issues. Um, this is especially important if you are uh, modifying your bike in any way such as um, putting in different size head gaskets, uh, different size base gaskets, um, doing all kinds of, uh, you know, doing big ball kits or whatever where it's not a standard part. Um, it's always good to check clearances. But um, so, um, but I do it with every single build that I do. Yes, I've forgotten to do it before, um, as usually standard parts will fit, um, but it's always a good idea to do this. So we're going to rotate this two times so we can, and also, sorry, you want to rotate it two times to make sure that after you've rotated the engine, um, that uh, you have set the camshaft, uh, you've set your timing chain correctly um, so that you're not off a tooth one, one direction or the other, you're not an advanced or a uh, set before. So um, I'm going to do that here. Um, I like to grab the clutch basket, that's why I don't like to cover up this side. I like to leave the, the clutch basket or the clutch cover off. Okay. So um, we're going to rotate this two times. Actually, sorry, I'm going to to rotate it and you can watch. It doesn't really matter if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise um, because um, you're just checking for clearance on, on this side. Okay, and you see I've rotated it twice and now the timing mark is aligned with the circle. You can see that. And um, so, what we are going to do, um, now if you understand how it feels to be at top dead center, you can actually just wiggle the clutch basket really, you see I'm doing this with one finger, and it, it sort of has, you can rock it back and forth. Um, this means that, I, I can tell you that this means this is a top dead center because the piston's at the top and you're not pushing the piston down at all. That's why it's rocking because it's, it's rocking back and forth from the, the connecting rod going back, um, going up and down, or shall I say back and forth on the crankshaft. There's no piston or there's no pressure being exerted on the piston. So I know we're at top dead center so I can just look over here and see that the timing mark is correct and that we will be good. But if you want to check this um, to be a little more thorough, um, what uh, you can do is um, stick something down the hole of the spark plug. Now I am Asian and um, so I've got chopsticks everywhere and I like to use a chopstick. Um, here's, I'll show you how I like to do it. Is I like to, first I like using wood because you're not going to scratch the inside of everything. Let's say I, you know, pushing this rather vigorously and it's not as going to scratch anything. Um, but what I also like to do, this is how I like to test the um, how, how close you are to top dead center because some people they, they want to, they say use a straw or use a pipe cleaner or use something like this and then you hold it up to here and then you, you go back and forth on the flywheel to see when, um, if this was an example, when the, um, the chopstick hits the top and then it will they will pause and then it will go back down but I'm one of those people I don't actually like that method as much as this one um, what I'd like to do is I like to put the the chopstick in or whatever it is relatively horizontal to the engine and what it's going to do is the piston is going to be pushing up against the chopstick or, or whatever it is and you see how little movement back and forth you see how little I push up over here and yet how far the chopstick moves. Well, that makes it much, much easier for you to detect. So you can see the movement is very far over here, but I'm barely pushing it up and down on this side. So this makes it very, very easy for you to detect with your eye when the motor gets to top dead centers because the you will see the chopstick move very quickly and then go back down very quickly. And I will try and show it this to you. Well, actually I'll have to do this with one hand. So um, so I'm going to back the, the, you see, just that little turn, look at that, you can see just a little turn and the chopstick's already going down. Um, so when I turn the motor and I hit top dead center, now you see the chopstick has stopped. 
So it stopped, you see I'm wiggling the clutch back and forth, but then I, as soon as I start turning, you can see the chopstick go um, this way. And then I get back to top dead center and um, you can see again, it's not moving. This is that rocking back and forth I was talking about. And then turning again, see, and then it stops and then turn again. And so that's why I like using it this way because it's much easier to tell rather than going straight up and down because then you have to detect this little minute amount of you know, moving and uh, this way just makes it easier. Um, also what you can do is if you're not holding a camera like I am, you can fade the chopstick in and you can, um, you can hold it like this and you can actually feel when the piston stops moving as you are actuating, you know, as you are rotating the motor. So we know that, um, so we know from this, um, as you can see, in fact, let's do it again. Um, okay, it goes down. Now we're at top dead center. The chopstick is not moving. We know that the piston is at top dead center. So let's examine our crank, our crank, um, our cam. And you can see we are bang on with the timing mark. Got a little bit of junk in there. Um, I'll get that later. And you can see we are bang on at the timing mark. So we know we've done this correctly. And now we can go back in time to the old video and then you will see me tighten down these bolts. Also, torque down these bolts. Oh, right. So that is how you torque down the head. By the way, by the way, if you see junk on the surface like this from a gasket, clean it off. Usually your fingernail will do. Um, if not, Use a plastic gasket scraper and um, clean them off and then wipe it off with a uh, solvent, um, acetone. Um, as long as it, a brake cleaner works good, as long as you don't uh, leave a residue um, after that. There you go. I'm going to go to the other side now. So I'm going to wipe this down with acetone to get the oils off from my fingers off of this because I've been gripping that side. I'm going to do it for the other side of the cam um, chain cover. Now we are going to install the oil um, block off plate. What that does is redirect the oil straight into the camshaft. Um, if this is where you would attach an oil cooler, if you have one, not going to go into that for this walkthrough. Um, it does have a gasket. I had to soak this gasket in sealer because it is a non-resin, had no resin in it. Um, I don't think you're ever going to run into that in the West. So um, put it on and bolt it down. Now I'm not going to torque the bolts down all the way over here. I'm just going to install those two bolts so that the plate stays in place. Okay, feed the bolts in and bolt it down. But um, like I said, I'm not going to torque these down. I'm just going to cinch them down enough so that the plate doesn't fall out. Um, and you, you will see. Well, I'll, I'll explain why I do that. So um, just finger tighten them down for now. And uh, the next side we're going to do is the cam chain cover, which is on the opposite side of the cylinder head. Um, of course, make sure that we uh, bolted these down, um, which we have. You're going to have a gasket on here. It's a, again, by um, dual sided gasket. I love these. You fit the cover over. The way that it goes is that um, this, it, it's kind of a peace sign, and uh, the, the leg of the peace sign, or this notch, is going to be facing this way. So, best I can describe it. So you see how um, th this side, this little notch is going to be pointing towards here. Just flip it over. That's about the way that it is going in. Okay, so that is how it works um, with these. I mean, you, you can rotate it any way that you want, um, as you can see. Um, but uh, the, the way that I've seen them come through, uh, come from the factory, is um, having the this side pointing that way. So put, put that in, 
and then you're going to take the very long bolt and it has a copper washer you see it's got a washer and it's the long bolt and you're going to feed it through that last remaining bolt hole in the other side of the engine oh, I can't really do this with one hand or, or I can't do an action shot of this so I'm just going to show you kind of from I'm feeding in through the center bolt hole of that um, of the, the side of the oil block off plate and thread it in and tighten it down and th okay and thread that bolt in and tighten it down it doesn't it doesn't take a massive amount of torque or anything and you can always in case uh, for some reason it's too loose you can always just give it a cinch more torque afterwards so there we go it is tight Okay, next what we're going to be um, addressing is the timing chain tensioner. Um, that's this arm right here. The little one-way check valve thing, uh, you've got your spring in, you have the cap. Um, here you go, make sure it still has the aluminium washer on it. Um, your bolt, and uh, I think I said the wheel already, I'm not sure. Um, if these teeth are worn, then um, get yourself a better um, wheel. And so this one, the teeth obviously there. Uh, so that's um, that's fine. Um, if you're wondering why I did this later, um, it doesn't really matter. You can put the timing chain tensioner on first. The reason I don't put it in first though is because this tends to get in the way. Also, the timing chain tensioner is, um, what, what it is, is it's a one-way check valve. Um, so it, this bobs up and down oil falls in there through these recesses and it pumps this up and it keeps it so that it doesn't, uh, that it maintains its height and that's how it um, works as a tensioner so but you see the way that works is that you have to have oil pressure for that to work and um, so obviously when you're putting the engine together you're gonna have no oil pressure so it doesn't it's not going to tension anything it's just going to get in the way that's why I like to leave it for later in case you're wondering um, I like to take the rod you can of course replace it if you want it's going to go in through this hole right here um, some some bikes have a screw some of them um th this one is an open it's just there's a cap that goes over it and that's held on by the stator cover that's a different um yeah just in case you're wondering if it why it looks different here i will show you so here, here's the hole slide this in here i like to tilt the engine up like this because um it keeps the um it keeps this in i guess you could say properly Take your spring. Um, this is a later version of the spring, so it might look a bit um, fatter and shorter than yours, but um, it's uh, same same job. Then you you the spring's not going to go in all the way. Um, align the spring on this little nub of the tensioner cap. So the nub goes over here. Walk in the spring. See see my. So you have to yeah walk it in. Start a few threads might be a little tricky it's not that much pressure and just thread it in like so now what we do um, you see how you can so easily push this down so um, again that's why I was saying it doesn't really have much of an effect on tightening things down wedge this guy in here so that you can feed the bolt this long bolt in and lastly gonna slide on the wheel so all you need to do push this up take a wheel and plonk it on there I should use my eyes instead of the viewfinder for this there you go the only other thing sorry if is um, if you have a screw it might look like this with a washer on it um, you might put that in here but this one doesn't have that this one has just a little cap that gets pressed on there